Calgary Stampeders look for back-to-back -back wins against the Edmonton Eskimos. In recent years, the Eskimos would rather forget Labor Day classics. Monday's battle was no different. Calgary was able to outmuscle their arch-rival Eskimos. While the offense put points on the board, the defense and special teams stopped Edmonton's game. The Eskies were going nowhere, scoring only one touchdown in the 27-14 loss. And they lost quarterback Danny McManus again to injury. Four days later, the Alberta battle continues. defensive unit 
if they can dominate the game is going to be the key because when you look at it on paper, Calgary's passing game and running game is superior to Edmonton because of uh, Danny McManus being out of the lineup. So I look for the defenses to make some things happen, make turnovers. What an interesting point, though, for the pick, Marty York. Calgary coming off the big win, but Edmonton, of course, still the better record and at home. How do you like this one? Well, Rod, Las Vegas is favoring the Eskimos uh, by three points, but I don't know why. I mean, the Eskimos are well coached by Ron Lancaster. There's no question about that. But they're playing tonight without uh, their first-string quarterback, as we mentioned, Danny McManus, which means they have to use Jim Kemp. And, and when Kemp plays, that, that means trouble for the Eskimos. Two weeks ago, uh, with Kemp playing, the, the Eskimos barely beat the Tiger Cats of all teams. Uh, Calgary does a better job in handling the football, too. They're leading the CFL in plus-minus with a plus-15. And remember, Jeff Garcia is playing better than ever, than he's ever played before. So, I think the battle of uh, Alberta in this game goes to uh, Calgary. Uh, the Stamps should at least cover the spread anyway. There is one interesting point, though, that goes against that, and that is only twice in the history of these back-to-back -back games in September has there been a sweep, 1990 and 1995. So they have happened in the 90s, and Calgary looking to make it happen in 1997. Henry Gizmo Williams, one of the guys that is hoping that will not happen, being honored by Jeff Giles, the CFL president, the all-time, all-purpose yardage leader. Congratulations to Henry. Much deserved. we got the opening kickoff coming up. Commonwealth Stadium. Beat the battered and embarrassed Monday in Calgary. The Eskimos are home at Commonwealth, ready for the Alberta rematch. Nice evening for football. The wind is not really a major factor, as you can see there. And Wally Buono has been all smiles since Monday afternoon. Yes, after an 0-3 start, his troops have rallied to a 5-2 last seven ball games. They're playing extremely well right now. Ron Lancaster, on the other hand, grumpy at times. He's grumpy. He felt his team lost the physical battle last week. His message to the team was simple. I don't care what happens on the scoreboard. Let's go out and win the physical battle today. Marvin Coleman is ready to get the game underway. Standing back. Here is 12-yard line for the Sean Fleming kickoff. Coleman behind the 10. And he's out to the 29. A few puddles out there. And you'll see a few splashes this evening. Tonight's starting lineup brought to you by Midas, Calgary's Jeff Garcia. More relaxed and having some fun running the Stampeder offense in the last few weeks. He has the Stampeders on a roll, hitting on... Almost 60% of his passes, 17 touchdowns, a nice number. Stampeders begin at the 29. First down. A balanced attack last week against the Eskimos. Garcia, shotgun, looks to the far side. He has Danielson. And he's wrapped up by Tommy Henry. Well, this offensive line from Calgary supplied over 150 yards of rushing, but these guys right here are the key. These guys are going to have to make some plays because the running game is going to be shut down because Vinny Goods and the boys. This offensive line, Fred Childress, has graded out the best of this group throughout the season. Close to a 10-yard gain for the Stampeders on the first play from the line. They'll measure to make sure the Stampeders success last week suits. They did very well on first down production. They did. And it was primarily running the football. And it's interesting to see that Tony Marciano, the offensive coordinator, is talking to Jeff Garcia and that they come out and throw it on the first play of the game. Talk all week in Edmonton was we got to stop the run in Calvin Anderson and now they start out throwing. Now you got to stop Vince Danielson too. <laughs> well, I think the key is they wanted to get off to a good first down start here. Now they're second and real short. Didn't want to be backed up on second down. Inches to go for a Stampeder first down. Just nicely underway on a lovely night for a game at Commonwealth Stadium. Three receivers to the near side and Garcia himself. That'll be a first down with no markers anywhere. Eskimo defense with a little something to prove this week. Well, they feel they're better than they performed last week. Benny Goods is back in the lineup up front. That has got to help him with the pass rush and running the ball. And in the secondary, a couple of juggles. Derek Beattie is out. Glenn Rogers and Tommy Henry will play the halfback. Davis Reed and Malcolm Franks on the corner. And the ageless Willie Pless, always a key member of the Eskimo defensive front seven. 
Here's Anderson for a couple. Already a better start for the guys up front. Well, immediately, Benny Goods and Derek McCready step up and plug the middle. What those guys are trying to do is form a pile and then let Dickinson and Pless rally to the football. Well, that's the key in the front four defensively. If, if Benny Goods can keep the offensive lineman off Willie Pless, like you said, that allows him to free up and make those tackles in the open field. A gain of one, second and nine, Calgary. Garcia to the shotgun. Three receivers to the near side. And Garcia looks to Pitts. No catch, no flag. Coverage by Tommy Henry, who's back in a new spot. Well, Jeff doesn't see Pitts initially because Pitts runs the old out and up, and he had Tommy Henry sucked up on the out and was actually open. Trent Brown's not going to be able to get over there, and Garcia underthrows the ball. Tommy's lucky not have interference there, Glenn. Uh, he's very lucky. Tommy Henry could have been called for base guard and getting his hands up in Pitts' face and not looking back to the football, so he gets away with one early. And they'll re-kick here on third down. Play was whistled down. Yeah, I thought that was a close call on Henry. He got well, his hands up there, but I guess the, the indication he's going for the ball. Yeah, when you're playing defensive back, you put your hands in the guy's face. You better look back to the football. Tommy Henry did Got away with it. The Giz awaits. From the 25. Here goes the Giz up to the 40-yard line. Wrapped up by Darrell Hall. Eskimos forced into a field goal drive. 
from the 35. Sean Fleming had a tough week at McMahon. He missed all three attempts. Good on 20 of 27 so far this season. This one is wide. So Fleming is 0 for 1. Kicker Sean Fleming has now missed four in a row. He was wide from 35. We talked about him missing three last week. The Eskimos didn't really think that he'd missed all three of those. No, I talked to Tommy Henry down on the field, one of the defenders for the Eskimos. They felt like he had made at least one, maybe two of the kicks. But uh, he found the right place to sit on the bench right behind Mark Colbert so he couldn't get his face on the screen. Yeah. It's a lonely spot when you're missing, you're struggling. For kicker, it all comes down to confidence. And right now, Sean Fleming's struggling. Stan Peters on first down. Garcia finds Dwayne Ford. Garcia's really had a hot hand over the last little while, beating the Argonauts three weeks ago. Tough game against BC, and then the uh, monster win over the Eskimos last Monday. He really has been hot over the last seven games. He's had 12 touchdowns and two interceptions, completing almost 60% of his passes. That's since they lost, they went 0-3. He's really gotten the hot hand. Ford picked up 13 for another Calgary first down. Garcia picked up. Davis Reed. What a play by Garcia. What a play by Garcia to save a touchdown. There's no way in the world this, that Cavus Reed doesn't score on this win, but Garcia fights through like three blocks to save after makes a bad throw, saves the touchdown. Well, it looked like miscommunication on the throw. Garcia's going to throw it to what he thinks should be a curl route by Terry Vaughn, and Vaughn cleared right through and went on a post route. Now, you're right. Cavus Reed taking this down the sideline. Look at the green jerseys. Garcia's one on four and comes up with a tackle. Unbelievable. Took a couple of hits before getting to the ball carrier. But Reed's interception sets the Eskimos up inside the 40. And Camp is on target. He has blown again, and he turns the corner with a big play. Forced out by Al Jordan. Eric Blunt, a different guy this week. Now, the, bat, the end of that play is key for the Edmonton Eskimos. We talked about it in the onset. Eric Blunt and the Edmonton Eskimos lost the physical battle last week. Now, watch what he does at the end of this football play to Al Jordan on the sideline. That's delivered in the blow, and that's going to get his team pumped up. Blunt picks up 12. Eskimos are set up at the Stampeder 25. Edmonton leading 1-0 and a wide field goal. Kent takes a hit, delivers the end zone toss, touchdown! Robert Gordon, a 25-yard touchdown reception. His fourth of the season, he was all alone. And you gotta applaud Jimmy Kemp. He stands in and takes a vicious shot in the pocket. He knows he's gonna get hit. He knows that Calgary's coming after him. Man coverage in the secondary, but he allows Robert Gordon to clear and makes the throw. Watch the shot Kemp's going to take as he lets this one go. Gordon had all day to wait for that one. Yeah, it looked to me like Marvin Coleman and John Kalen got crossed up in the secondary. Gordon got in behind both of them. Robert Gordon celebrating his fourth touchdown of the season. The Eskimos on top of the Stampeders. 8-0 on Friday Night Football. Commonwealth and Edmonton. It's Friday Night Football on TSN. Robert Gordon off to a great start tonight. A couple of catches. 46 yards and the touchdown. First wave, he's up to the 35. Camp has been on three for three, 58 yards, and the touchdown to this guy. Nothing fancy from Gordon. Here he is right here, just going to take off right down the field. The confusion comes in the secondary for the Calgary Stampeders. They're supposed to switch. Kenton Leonard and Marvin Coleman. Marvin Coleman thinks 
he's going to switch off and come inside. Kenton Leonard doesn't do it. Coleman gets caught. Garcia and the Stampeders. Down by eight. Garcia looks to take off. He's tripped up as he crossed the line for a gain of maybe one. Well, this is the area where Jeff Garcia has heard him. You see Melvin Hunter encouraging this large crowd here at Commonwealth, but it's the rush of McCready and Goods staying in their lanes and not giving Garcia the opportunity to run out. You see McCready stay at home, which allows Melvin Hunter to come in and make the play. Going back to that touchdown where Jimmy Camp also getting a little bit of pressure from that Calgary defensive line. Second and nine. Stampeders. Danielson makes the catch. He'll be well short of the first down. Wrapped up by Willie Plass for one. And Leroy Blue. Well, you like to come out as a team and set the tone. And certainly, the way the offense is played for Edmonton, Danielson's down one of the main receiver for Jeff Garcia, so they can ill afford to lose him. But you can see that the Edmonton offense is feeding the Edmonton defense, and both sides of the ball are playing with a purpose. Yeah, they're playing fired up football right here, and that probably comes a little bit from the speech they got from their head coach, Ron Lancaster, said, win the physical battle. And you see with Vince Danielson on the ground, it's been a hard hitting game already, and Edmonton's got the advantage. No doubt about it, the Eskimos lost both battles along the lines last week, defensively and offensively. As Danielson, the leading receiver for the Stampeders, heads to the sidelines. What a difference four days can make in the Battle of Alberta. Watch this defense rally to the football. They force Garcia to throw underneath, and here they come. There's Bless, Blue. They're all there. Martino to the Giz. Henry Williams backtracking to the 12. Flags are already down. And the Giz is wrapped up at the 24. 12 on the return after a nice 53-yard putt. Eskimos on top of the Stampeders on Friday Night Football. Jimmy Camp has the Eskimos on a roll. Numbers for Kemp, too many interceptions in the games that he has played. However, he has won one game as a starter for the Eskimos against Hamilton this year. And he's off to a fast start tonight. Three for three for 58 yards and a touch. So he's playing some solid football for the Eskimos right now. Clipping call against the Eskimos means Edmonton will start back at the six-yard line. Make it the seven. Kemp doesn't run a lot. Speed and hustle there. Wrapped up by Darrell Hall. If he had white shoes, he'd look a lot faster. Well, Jimmy Kemp did a great job of escaping there. Gordon has already caught a touchdown, but the guy to watch is Shannon Myers. He's in for Eddie Brown, has had a couple of solid performances for this team. The offensive line, been maligned. They're going to have to step up tonight because Calgary's tough across the front seven. Kemp grabbed eight. Second and two. Eskimos out to the 15. Looking for a couple, and they may have it. Stampeder defense looked tougher last week. They looked real good up front, and Bronzel Miller, a big reason for that for the Calgary defensive line. Up front, you see Bronzel Miller, number 96. He replaces Dwayne Patterson, joined by Steve Anderson, Pope, and Ernie Brown. And in the secondary, Al Jordan back on the corner, led the CFL a year ago with eight interceptions, does not have one this year. Eric Blunt did pick up the first down for the Eskimos, and he gets it again here, trying to turn the corner on the right side. Flip, but he gained better than five. John Kalen made the tackle. Well, these guys, 34 and 35, took a little heat this week in Edmonton as well for their lack of production against the Stampeders last week. Yeah, you take a look at their rushing yardage. Eric Blunt, who had over 1,000 yards rushing last year, is on pace to come up about half of that this year, about 580 yards. So disappointment in the running game in Edmonton, definitely. Here we are. On second and five, Tolbert makes the catch, wrapped up by Biggs, another Eskimo first down. Well, Jimmy's getting the protection and the offensive line's keeping him in good situations. Great blocking up front on the last running play by, by Blunt as Chris Morris made a great block.
on the outside. This time he gets good protection. Tolbert sets it down in the zone. He's, he's throwing high percentage, making high percentage throws, keeping drives alive. He's looked sharp. Four for four thus far. And the touchdown to put Edmondson in front. Eight nothing in the Stampeders. One again. Slight delay in the backfield. It was obviously too long. He's racked up by Marvin Pope. Number 91. Loss will be six. Well, Mar Marvin Pope has contained on the play. He steps up and takes on the block of Chris Morris and stands him straight up in the backfield and then works to the run running back. And the problem with the play is Corey Blunt, or Blunt, Eric Blunt does not stay with Tony Burris, who was his lead back there. That's what created the problem in the backfield. From the shotgun, at second and 16. Kemp stands in confidently, has another first down. Darren Flutie. Kent Leonard on the tackle. This guy's having a great start. Boy, I like the way he is standing in there confidently and delivering a football into traffic. He's thrown that ball over the middle a couple of times so far tonight, and that is a strike, David Archer. Well, and how about the pass pro of the offensive line? Boy, they're really stepping up right now. They said they needed to, and they have. If you want to be a starter in this league, these are the types of games you have to be able to play in said Jimmy Kemp just yesterday. First miss, that one hops. Up to the far side. Receiver. You know, you talked to Ron Lancaster about how he feels about Jim Kemp, and I asked him, you know, what do you see in Jim Kemp that they didn't see in Saskatchewan a year ago where Kemp struggled? He said, you know, he doesn't throw real well, he doesn't run real well, but he just gets things done. <laughs> I thought that was a I don't, thing yesterday. I don't know if I would take that as a positive as a quarterback. <laughs> now, Darren Flutie didn't agree with the head coach. No. He felt he, threw, he throws the ball pretty well, but he's certainly been tossing it well tonight. He's only missed one. Colbert got to it, along with Johnson to wrap them up. I thought there was a chance for the interception. Colbert comes up with a catch. A lot of people talk about Kemp's inability to move, that he's just like Danny McManus. I played with Jimmy Kemp. This guy's a good athlete. He skates out of there and makes a nice throw, and look where the throw is to the inside shoulder of Tolbert to prevent the interception. Oh, great poise by Kemp, throwing across his body like you talked about, getting that one in there to Tolbert. One again on first down. Turn the corner and grab the yard. Marvin Coleman up to make the tackle. So Danny McManus is watching Jim Kemp take over his football team, and Kemp's done a great job thus far. That's Ron Lancaster, Jr. He's the offensive coordinator of this offense. He's talking to Danny McManus down on the sidelines with the headset, and they're relaying some thoughts into Jimmy Kemp. But I talked to Kemp before the game. He said he was calling the game. It's his game. And I have a feeling that Danny McManus may have a couple of kicks for him as it goes on. Second down, and Flutie made the catch. He'll come up a little short. Ernie... Eddie Davis, rather, 29. On Flutie there, we'll see where the spot is and how close the Eskimos are to another first down. Flutie got kneed at the end of that play by Marvin Coleman right in the side of the head. And he is slow to get up. Darren Flutie is, is right here on your screen, going to come all the way across the field. Right at the end of the play, he gets kneed right in the side of the head. Catches it here. Here comes Coleman. Look at that shot. And Glenn, he's down. The guy is down on the play. It looked like to me he hit him in the back of the head once he was seated. He was on the turf. No reason for that hit. Probably could have drawn a flag there. Stampeders were offside, so the Eskimos look at a second and one situation as a result. Flutie will sit out a player two. Actually, third and one. Eskimos going gambling here as they flip that down marker and another penalty is called. Did you see a first down there? Automatically. And when you ever to give it to 34 in that situation, he's going to get you a yard.
Willie Pless, actually, the ball carrier, says he has the first down. Calgary was offside. Of course, when you give it to 39, he'll yeah. get you a yard also. <laughs> yeah, and the Most concern with Burst is that that cast on his hand is going to be tough for him to carry the football. So, even though he does get it a lot of times on short yardage, probably tonight, you'll see Pless and Blunt carrying it for him. Pless has four carries now. One went for a touchdown earlier, and he has one reception for a touchdown. And he plays linebacker full-time. Blunt wrapped up. He'll lose a little. Raymond Biggs. And Biggs is playing for Anthony McClanahan, who's in Calgary. McClanahan was injured last week, or at least on Monday. Ray, Raymond Biggs, usually playing on special teams, but gets his chance to start with McClanahan out. Has one sack so far this season. And he filled in really well for A.J. Uh, Anthony uh, Alondra Johnson when he was injured earlier in the year in the middle. Eskimos looking at second and 11. Tim's time evaporates. He's got two receivers down the sideline. One was Flutie. They might have tossed that one away. Pretty nice little move from a guy who can't run very well to the outside on Ernie Brown. And he can't throw very well either, right? <laughs> That's where the field conditions also come into play. Ernie Brown had Kemp, and that one little head fake, and Ernie Brown couldn't cut back because of the field conditions. Sean Fleming's average has been dropping a little bit of late. Full-time punter with the Eskimos for the first time in 97. And the new job has had its ups and downs. And again, so is the old job of kicking field goals. He's missed four in a row. He got a pretty good roll out of this one down to the one-yard line. It wasn't a thing of beauty, but it's not bad when you pin him at the five. Well, that's why the pro golfers like to play the soft greens, because the ball's going to sit down for him. And that one sat down just like a wedge shot. Boy, he sat it down right on the one-yard line. You know, you talk about Fleming and his punting problems, and Ron Lancaster said, you know, I'm not worried about his punting. I'm a little concerned about the field goals, but punting, we're netting about 34 yards. Last year, we averaged 41, which is higher than Fleming this year, but the net was the same. Sean Fleming kicks a high punt. Now, the returns against the Eskimos are the best in the league, only 3.6 on average when Sean Fleming is punting, so that's a pretty good deal. Full two yards better than in any of the other teams. On returns against, Kelvin Anderson. And running isn't quite as easy when it's soft and soggy at Commonwealth Stadium. That's the end of quarter one. Eskimos on top of the Stampeders, 8 to nothing. And we'll send you to Friday Night Football Control. Friday Night Football, live at the quarter, is brought to you by Midas for new, longer-lasting carbon metallic brake pads. Welcome back. Friday Night Football Control. Rod Smith along with Bob Obilovich, Les Brown, Marty York of the Globe and Mail. What a difference four days makes, <laughs> gentlemen, especially once you head back to Commonwealth Stadium and Jimmy Kemp looking like Jack Kemp back at his uh, Buffalo Bill days, <laughs> the way he's throwing that football right now. But the touchdown, Obi, gets set up by a nice defensive play. Well, just like going into the game, uh, Edmonton's defense is the first unit uh, talking about which defense is going to make things happen. And you'll see on the replay that we show you here that uh, the defensive end by Edmonton, uh, Leroy Ballou, puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback, comes off the end, pushes the tackle right into the Jeff Garcia's face, makes him throw the ball high, and an easy pick by uh, the defense and sets up Edmonton's first touchdown. You know what, more importantly, is Jimmy Kemp. Now, I kind of made a little face at the beginning. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but sometimes you don't play like this, and you're playing like a champion tonight. I mean, tell him, like, seven of nine. The guy starts off on his own four-yard line, drives him all the way down the field. Now they have Calgary on their own five, and that's a heck of a job. And he's scrambling well, too. He's not only passing well, he's scrambling well. And he was the same guy that Anthony McClanahan of Calgary said before the game, uh, he said that Kemp should be playing Sega football instead of <laughs> professional football. I mean, that talk well, about that, a shot. That, that goes to show that a guy that's not playing shouldn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, you know, that, that builds up a guy, gets him all pumped, ready to play. Oh, come on. Does that really do yeah, that stuff, does. that bulletin?
reason for it, oh, Steph? Man. We <laughs> cut off some of the stuff that you guys write and put them in the locker room so that we can get pumped oh, up. For it. Already the retractions are being made about things said about Jimmy Kemp. Certainly the way he's playing right now, deservedly so. Been able to move the ball. Uh, even when they're hemmed in deep in their own zone. Let's head back to the second quarter now in Edmonton for John Glenn and Dave, guys. Great start for the Eskimos, in particular quarterback Jimmy Kemp, who has passed very effectively and has the Eskimos into an 8 nothing lead. Stampeders and Garcia really haven't had their offense rolling thus far. And now Garcia starts inside his 10. makes the catch and he'll have enough for a first down. Brent Brown over to pin him. Danielson was nicked earlier in the game and obviously has returned on the play. Willie Pless blitz left the middle wide open. Danielson is great at recognizing when blitz is coming and going to the open area and gives his quarterback a target on the last play. Just a couple of catches for Danielson last week for 26 yards. As a first down and a big one for the Stampeders. Garcia under the cover. He'll get another first down from Ford. Good solid hit there. And Tommy Henry over to make the tackle. The ball squirted loose. Eskimos were trying to uh, suggest there was a fumble there, but it'll be a Stampeder first down. Well, Travis Moore tried to throw a block of what he thought was a blind block on <laughs> Willie Pless, and Pless saw him at the last second and knocked him right on his can. Terry Vaughn to the near side. Travis Moore flanked to the far side of the field for a Calgary first down. Garcia looks near side as Alan Pitts. His first catch, he's wrapped up by Malcolm Frank, and Pitts has about five. Well, and Pitts definitely has to be more involved in the offense than he was just five days ago when these te two teams met. Pitts only had two catches for 30 yards. He demands double coverage. Take a look at his career numbers. It demands double coverage, and you got to get him the football. The big deal with Pitts is 48 100-yard games. Garcia has Pitts, and that will be a Calgary first down. Malcolm Frank again. So it's Pitts back to back. Well, you immediately see the reaction. What happens with, with play action? There's a play action fake in there, and as Pitts breaks to the inside, there's no linebackers. As you can see, Dixon was pulled in, and now Dixon appears in your screen. He was pulled in by play action. And, and if you got a running game, which this team does, they had 90, 96 yards from Anderson last week. It allows Pitts to get clean behind the linebackers. Stampeders are on a roll. Out to midfield, they start it back inside the 10. Garcia, nice fake. And he has another first down. The pits are very close to it. The pits, the pits, the pits. And it's really becoming the pits drive, which is the pits if you're an Edmonton Eskimo fan. <laughs> Malcolm Frank and Glenn Rogers is giving Alan Pitts a lot of respect and backing up. Close enough to call him. Giving him a lot of space, so that's opening it up underneath for number 18. When you got three completely different looks, this time they give the bootleg look. You see Garcia pulls up and makes the throw to Pitts coming across the field. The play, the play previous to that, play action fake, Garcia stays in the pocket, and the one before that, he stays in the pocket on the drop back. Three completely different plays, three ways to get the ball in Alan Pitts. Same receiver. You bet. Garcia's best drive of the ball game as he chats with Marciano on the far side. It'll be another Calgary first down inside the Edmonton 50 now. Ford is out of the backfield as a wide receiver. Anderson got the call. Better than five yards, but he took a pretty good hit crossing in there. Wow. Ran into Dixon for one, but was that the big hit? <laughs> Credit to Kelvin Anderson. <laughs> he jumped right back up after that hit. He took a big one. Willie Pless right in the ear hole. You think these two teams like each other? Not a whole lot. <laughs> Benny Goods back in the Eskimo lineup after missing four weeks. Garcia, a little quarterback option, and now he makes it work. The far side, Anderson. What a great play by Kelvin Anderson. Wayne Rogers finally made the tackle, and the quarterback is out helping with the blocks. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff Garcia does everything on this play. He delays the pitch. He fakes the pitch 
initially to draw the defender to him. Watch, he fake the pitch. Now he draws Dixon to him, and now he dishes. And now he's going to be the lead blocker, Glenn. That's right. Now he's the lead block looking for a DB and takes Kavis Reed up to the sideline to give Kelvin Anderson an extra six yards. 35 yards for the Stampeders set up at the Eskimo five-yard line. First down. Edmonds in leading 8 nothing. Stampeders will come away with points from this. Anderson. Nothing there. Benny Goods part of the stopping team along with Bruce Dixon, the middle linebacker. Well, the guy for Edmonton that's playing a solid game is Derek McCready, number 79. He's submarine. You see him down on the ground right there. He got a hand on the leg of Kelvin Anderson and tripped him up. He's been in the backfield the majority of the night this evening. Stampeders are second and goal to go at the Eskimo four. Garcia has a little room himself, and he tosses for the touchdown. Alan Pitts from Jeff Garcia. Stampeders within two. What a great drive. What a play by Alan Pitts because he was doubled initially from the safety. Trent Brown came to the inside, but when Pitts ran that little out move, Trent Brown backed off. When he backs off, Pitts comes back underneath and picks up the touchdown. But Trent Brown was initially double covering Alan Pitts, took off and went deep. Pitts got open late. A tough matchup there, too, for Edmonton because that's the 5'9 Reggie Pleasant on the 6'4 Alan Pitts. Just a basketball move, screened him, and took the pass. Stampeders within a point of the Eskimos. After a great drive, Alan Pitts, a big part of it, four receptions for 35 yards, and the four-yard touchdown celebrated by Jeff Garcia. Covered Alan Pitts on that drive. He carried Calgary most of the way to the end zone. Hey, what a job, An 8-7 ball game now. And the Giz awaits the kickoff. Henry Williams from the 20. Nice run. He thinks he's going to break one. Every time he gets his hands on the football, then it's pinball for 32. Well, Alan Pitts on the last touchdown did a nice job of making Trent Brown, who's right here. Now, Trent Brown wants to go and double Pitts. When Pitts turns out, Trent Brown goes deep. Pitts fools him on the play, comes in. Now it's one-on-one -on, -one on Reggie Pleasant, and Reggie Pleasant can't handle it. Well, the reason Pitts comes back inside there, Glenn, is Pleasant did a great job of guarding him to the outside. He fell down, saw his quarterback was in trouble, came back and helped him. Great field position for Jimmy Camp and the Eskimos, beginning at the 50. Camp has been hot, and he continues that way. Flutie has the first down up near the 40. Well, it Pitts a huge part of that drive from start to finish. Here's a touchdown. See, Pleasant was on the outside because he felt he had inside help from Trent Brown, but when Trent Brown disappears, now it's tough to come back inside and make a play on that ball. I thought Garcia might have had a chance to hit the end zone himself there. But he gets the touchdown. <laughs> Looked a little open. Edmonton first down. Here's Blunt. And close to five yards. Oliver Johnson wrapped him up. That key block from Tony Burst that time on Raymond Biggs. Toss play to the weak side, and Burst got a nice lick on Raymond Biggs, gave him a crease to, tech it, to touch it up inside. Yeah, that was a concern. We talked about it, but I've been watching Tony Burst all game, and he is not having any problems blocking downfield. So Ron Lancaster felt that he might have made a mistake dressing Burst with the big cast on, but so far it hasn't been. Second and six. Kemp from the shotgun. Wide open. Shannon Myers inside the 15. John Kale in the safety made the tackle. Where's Kemp in? This guy's playing a heck of a ball game. Well, this throw is a confidence throw, John. I mean, the only reason you make this throw is because you have confidence that first Shannon's going to get off of the jam, which he did, and he knows that the complimentary routes underneath are going to pull coverage up, and he makes a great throw. Big catch from Shannon Myers, too, who knew he was going to get hit on the play from John Kalen, but concentrated and hung on to the football. Myers grabs 24. The S 
Eskimos are inside the Calgary 15. Kent can't find anybody open. And he's not going to win this one, I don't believe. Well, hang on. <laughs> Look for Gordon. It was a little long and right through the end zone. Marker down far side as well. I think you may get a late hit on Alondra Johnson on Jimmy Kemp. But Kemp's athletic ability keeps this one alive. And I can tell you from a defensive standpoint, when you're in a one-on-one -on -one in the open field, it starts to get frustrating and you get a little impatient. So you want to hit someone no matter where he is. I think Elijah Johnson waited too long and hit him out of bounds. Well, you also may get an illegal, but it looks like you're getting, I think he was beyond the line of scrimmage. That's what the call is. Beyond the line of scrimmage, makes a throw to Robert Gordon in the back of the end zone. Back ten, but... over the line of scrimmage. Eskimos roll back to a first and 20 situation. Now back at the 22. You can see AJ's in hot pursuit there and Kemp realizes it and that's one of those ones you got to tuck under your arm and just get out of bounds and don't hurt your team with a penalty. And Elijah Johnson well in bounds on that hit. Yes he was. So this is first and 20. Lots of time and looks to the corner. Tolbert. Not quite. Al Jordan was covering. And another marker down on the line. Well, I'll tell you what, that wasn't complete, but what a throw from Jim Kemp. Tolbert he, went for it, too. Well, he was on the hash mark closest to us. Are you getting illegal contact, I believe, on Alondra Johnson? And Alondra is famous for this. When you get crossing routes, he likes to step up and bump off the crossing routes. And the person he knocks down, I believe, is Robert Gordon on the play. He's going to come up and step and take away the short throw. He realizes that that's a throw the quarterback wants to go to. If the coverage is dropping off, he comes up and, and knocks Robert down. Now, you can hit a, a, a receiver coming across if you don't take a couple of steps out of your area to do it. Elijah Johnson did on that play. Eskimos are back where they started with a first and 10 inside the 15. And nowhere to go for Blunt on that running play. Raymond Biggs, 44 for the Stampeders. Maybe by your reaction, you didn't like the call offensively. Well, that's one of those uh, feast or famine calls. They had the blitz coming. And if you can crease them there, you're going to score. But more often than not, that gets stoned because... All the defending, defensive players, as you all know, have a gap to take on the blitz, and they're not going to allow you to crease them on a, on a trap play. Moss is one, second and 11. As Kent goes to the shotgun, and here's the charge. Away from Pope, under the cover, and low. Looking for blocks. Jimmy Camp missed assignment up front for the offensive line for Edmonton because Marvin Coleman comes clean off the top of your screen and just a pretty good feat by Kemp saves a big hit there. Well, they brought more people than they can block, and Chris Morris had to step down and block the inside rusher, which turns Marvin Pope loose. Yeah. Kent made him made him miss and threw the incompletion to keep yeah, the field. Hey, your position. Marvin's mixed My up. My Marvin's there. mixed up. Yeah. Marvin Pope, not Marvin Cole. I mean, Coleman's the like guy covering. Size, eh? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Coleman's the guy covering. Pope's the guy rushing the quarterback. Got I got it straight. Fleming missed his first. He's got his second. Eskimos have a four-point lead. Settling for three, but a real impressive drive by Jimmy Kim on Friday Night Football. One, they will not be on the roster until Monday. Garcia drove for a touchdown the last time he had the ball. Pitt seemed to make the catch, and it looks like it's being ruled. No catch. Eskimos tried to turn it into a fumble. They had recovered it. Rodgers to pick it up. Pitts didn't have control. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think when Alan Pitts caught the ball, he tried to change hands. He caught it and then tried to move it to his other hand, and when he did, it got punched out. Oh, there's no question, Glenn. You're exactly right. He changed it to begin to run, and Glenn Rogers is one of the best. Punched it out of there. Stampeders get away with one at second and ten. There's the heat on Garcia. He's away from the first wave and should get a first down with 
six yards to spare. Garcia's had an interesting night. Reggie Pleasant made the tackle. Garcia threw an interception, made a tackle, threw a couple of blocks on an option play. I tell you what, if you're a defensive player, you got to think this guy's never going to slide. Because yeah. if you do think he's going to slide, he's probably going to punish you at the end of a run. That wasn't a slide. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Barrett liked the play. Another Stampeder first down. Garcia can't get away from Malvin Hunter. Lost the ball. Eskimos have a chance at it. And they have the football. Malvin Hunter made the play. Commonwealth is jumping. It's the Eskimos by four, and Edmonton first down when we return. There was seven quarterback sacks this season. The previous play was even better because he got a turnover from Jeff Garcia. Garcia tossed an interception and fumbled. Eskimos are set up at the 41-yard line. Tolbert, long pass to the far side. It's actually the second turnover of the drive. Malvin Hunter coming up with the fumble recovery. The first one, Alan Pitts, was a fumble, but was called an incompletion. And Hunter just strips the ball right out. Almost catches it in the air, but does scramble around and pick it up off the ground. And what allowed the play is Derek McCready snuffed out a screen play, which allowed Malvin Hunter to get to the play and scrape it out. This is second and ten. Here's the heat on camp, and he won't get away. Wrapped up by two Stampeders. Steve Anderson leading the way. Raymond Biggs was also in that. He's played well. Boy, Steve Anderson looked like he came out of the blocks running. He was flying up in the middle, and Kemp had nowhere to go. You know, when the season started, Calgary felt like Steven Anderson was might, maybe their best pass rusher. They didn't get the production out of him. They moved him inside. Dwayne Patterson played the left end. He had eight sacks, which led the team with the injury. Anderson's able to move back outside, which is probably his natural position. Coleman awaits. Fleming will put it up after a 13-yard loss. He sailed this one. A big punch and Fleming celebrates that one. A 50 yarder, no return. It's out near the four. But all the guys that are congratulating him as he's coming off the field are defensive players. They realize this game more than any other, maybe, between these two teams is a field position game, and Edmonton's had the best of it so far in this game. And it's been because of Sean Fleming's punting, because that's the second one. He's put right in the corner, tons of hang time, and it was into a bit of a breeze. Made a lot of headlines this week in Edmonton talking about what happened Monday. They beat us in all aspects. Gave us a whipping. Garcia has Ford sliding out of the backfield on first down. And Ford has plenty for another first down out to the 20. Trent Brown, the safety over to make the tackle. Ford's been a factor. Garcia, a little more to work with. He's out near the 20. They're watching Friday Night Football along with John Fleming. Three minutes to go in the opening half at Commonwealth. The perfect night for football and pretty close to a perfect game. Thus far, Eskimos leading the Stampeders in the rematch. Garcia, nice play action fake on first down. He's going deep for Pitts. Pitts fought off a defender and made a great play. Tommy Henry covering on Pitts. And Allen gave, Allen gave him a little bit of a lesson there, no? Hey, unbelievable. I mean, Allen Pitts, he makes this play. The ball's underthrown. It's sort of an all-go. He's right there. He's going to run the corner route on a guy who's played linebacker all season in Tom Henry. Now, he was a, DP, a DB before.
before the year started. But Pitts does a nice job of fighting back to that football. And a great, for, great coverage there, Glenn. It's just Pitts making a play on the ball in the air. Absolutely. 39 yards. Brown Pitts has a touchdown already tonight. Stampeders set up near the 50. Tillman Anderson for maybe one. You know, Willie it's, Pless made the tackle. Sorry, John. It seems to me that Willie Pless has taken it upon himself to stop the running game for the Calgary Stampeders. He has been involved in almost every tackle and is flying to the football. Well, it's really no surprise that Willie Pless is in no. a lot of tackles. No. I mean, he had, he, had, in the league. he had 10 on Monday in this game, and he's kind of, he's, he's a leader in the league. I mean, and no, no question, 39 is always around the ball. Wonderful guy, too. Fun to be around. Second and seven, Garcia has Danielson, and Danielson turns it into a first down with a good run after making the catch. And Peters are rolling. Trent Brown finally caught up to Vince Danielson. Nothing fancy what Vince Danielson does. He's just going to, right here, going to turn out, but... Again, confusion for the Edmonton secondary. Sort of fall asleep on a switch play, and no one picks up Danielson out in the flat. Bit of a surprise that Pleasant and Henry be switching off, having not played together. Danielson got 15. The Stamps have a first down near the Eskimo 30. And this is Ford sliding out of the backfield. A big guy to bring down. Takes about three Eskimos with Reggie Pleasant in there now we, under that pile. We talked about switching on the last play. A little tempers flare a little bit here, but when you switch, you don't allow pick plays to happen. We see Ford catching that one out in the flat. Reggie Pleasant couldn't fight through the traffic because Edmonton on the last play decided to lock up man. No switching because they've messed up two switches. So they lock up man and now the rubs can happen. And you can't fight through and get outside and Reggie Pleasant had no shot to get out there. See the Edmonton Eskimos have decided right now we're going to lock on and play man. Pleasant, Pleasant can't fight through the mess. Second and two. Anderson has the first down easily across the Edmonton 20. And Pless is there again. But you see how the two options offensively, run and pass, feed one another. The passing game gets going off some bootlegs and some things. Suddenly, the running game comes back, but now it widens the defense. They say, hey, we got to keep Garcia in the pocket. They're releasing people in the flat. The, the linebackers are concerned about making plays. Now the running game comes in. Eskimos are leading by four. The Stampeders are threatening here. And the running game working effectively once more for Calgary. Anderson down to the 10 for seven more. And again, 39 made the tackle. Willie Bless. You got to credit the offensive line for Calgary on this drive, doing a nice job of protecting the quarterback and reestablishing the line of scrimmage in the Edmonton backfield because on that last play, Boy, they pushed Edmonton's D-line back about three yards. And the last two plays, Benny Goods has not been on the defensive line. Jed Roberts just came out. He had been replacing Goods. Goods immediately back in after two big runs by the offensive line. Barrett sends in the play. I would guess. Kelvin Anderson had a big week last week. 96 yards. Actually, that was earlier this week. It was Labor Day Monday just four days ago when these two teams met for the second time this year. Third meeting of the season, the Eskimos won week one. St. Peter's on Labor Day. So it's a critical game in this Battle of Alberta at Commonwealth tonight. Solid drive, beginning back at the four yard line. And now it's second and two Calgary. Eskimos had an extra guy out there. Rogers just got off in time. Anderson waiting for the first down. He's at the five. Well, right now, the Edmonton Eskimos are on their heels and confused. <laughs> and it goes as far as having too many guys on the field because just before that snap, Glenn Rogers Jr. took off and ran to the sideline. That's right where Kelvin Anderson ran, right where he left. And the guy that had to step up and make the play was... Reggie Pleasant, who we've talked about, is 5'9", 176. I think I'd rather have Glenn Rogers in that situation. Here comes Reggie now hustling off the field, so they made the switch. First and goal to go. Stan Peters at the 5. Garcia won't get it away. Leroy Blue. Fifth sack of the year for Leroy. Sometimes a great pass rush 
can save you in the back end. And I'll tell you what, Vince Danielson was wide open in the back of the end zone. Here's Blue coming off the edge, but if it's not for a pass rush, this is touchdown Calgary. Well, it's a wide rush by Blue. Jay McNeil tries to get out and make the block, but Kelvin Anderson's got to cover him up there. If he can't make the block, Anderson has to step up. Second and 16, Garcia with a touchdown pass. Pitts was the intended target. Coverage by Tommy Henry, a little confusion in the end zone. Well, I know in the past, Dave, and I, I, know, I know you've worked with a lot of receivers where you can have sort of a read route where a receiver can decide as he's going out which way he's going to go, corner or post. And it looked to me like on that play, that's exactly what was called, and Garcia thought it was going to be the corner. Yeah, I agree with you. I think he had a chance to go either way here, and because of the rush of Derek McCready, he can't get the ball off when he wants to. Good job of Tommy Henry rerouting Pitts. By then, Garcia had to make up his mind and let it go. He'd thrown the ball to the outside thinking Pitts was going to go outside. Tommy Henry, good job of rerouting Pitts on, the, on his pass route. Six seconds till halftime as they discuss it on the Stampeder bench. And McLaughlin is good to narrow the gap to a single point heading to the dressing room. Two seconds left on the clock. So that was a big play by Leroy Blue. First and goal to go at the five-yard line. Blue with the sack. Oh, and on that play, boy, Vince Danielson was waving his hands wide open and saves the secondary for Edmonton. And then, of course, in the ensuing play, they comes up with the big play as well. So now it's three points instead of seven. And Garcia's talking about it right there with Danny, with Danny Barrett and the rest of the offensive players. He realizes McCready made him speed up that throw. Pitts is talking about what route he's going to go. Pitts didn't have McCready breathing down his neck and ready to throw that football. <laughs> Quarterbacks always have a different point of view, don't they? <laughs> Pretty good first half of football. Very. Uh, this is, and did you doubt that this would be a good ball game? No, you used to. Especially after the last week's game, this is going to be a good one. It'll be interesting to see what the boys back in Toronto talk about this one and some of the other things in the league. Well, they're live and they're fired up back at Friday night football control. We'll send it to them for halftime in a one-point ball game at Commonwealth in Edmonton. Yes, we are all fired up. Rod Smith back with Bob Bilovich, Les Brown, Marty York of the Globe and Mail. You expected a good game. We're getting a very good game. It is close. Just a point separating the Eskimos and the Calgary Stampeders. And Les had talked about this before the game. With a slick field especially, favors the offense. And even though we don't have the points to show for it, Les, those O's have been moving the football tonight. Well, I want to tell you this. I think Sean Fleming is hurt in Edmonton. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> but I'm being a bit facetious here. Though. <laughs> I hope every, so. He's already come down and well, criticized. This, every kick that Sean Fleming has had that has went inside the five-yard line, Calgary has turned it into points. They've marched the ball all the way down the field and turned it into points. But I guess that goes to show you what we talked about at the beginning of the game, with field position or the field conditioning being that sloppy was in favor of the offense. Jimmy Kemp is, uh, is going to say OB uh, needed the help of the running game maybe to uh, to get things going a bit, although he's been throwing the ball very well. I think with the short week, one, adjust, one adjustment that the Edmonton uh, coaching staff has made on offense, and it's been a mystery to me for the last two years that they can't run the ball better with that offensive line and Tony Burse at fullback and Eric Blunt is a running back. And they're trying to establish the run tonight to try and help uh, Jimmy Kemp in his starting uh, job. As far as Calgary's offense goes, Marty, Jeff Garcia, he does a lot of things, not just throw the football. Well, you know, we said at the, uh, in the pregame show that uh, he's, he's being admired by people right around the league because he's so tough mentally that earlier in the year they didn't think he was, had the toughness to stay on. Now you have to say that he's got the toughness physically, too. I mean, he really plays like a linebacker, uh, I guess a little bit like Matt Dunnigan. Oh After the interception, what a hit. Not, knocked over, not over knocked over the blocker, but ended up making the tackle. He's just a very tough player. He doesn't play like most quarterbacks. I would not want to be Reggie Pleasant on that one right there, just being knocked down by him. By Garcia, yeah. <laughs> not on when they watch the films on Sunday. No, oh, but every, te <laughs> every teammate is going to be criticized. And on that play there, Garcia was the lead blocker. I mean, you just don't see that very often from quarterbacks. Well, in this one, it is extremely close, and uh, I guess you'd expect that so much. You talked about Edmonton had to show something that it was a bit of an aberration in McMahon Stadium. It shouldn't have happened. So far, I think they're making a pretty good statement that Calgary's not going to walk into their home turf and blow them away. Well, I, this team came out fired up, and as I spoke at the beginning of the show, I said that everybody around Jimmy Kemp had to pick up their play. 
and I think that has happened. As Coach had mentioned, they're trying to run the ball to try to get him some extra, you know, throwing room or whatever. And also, the defense has picked up their game and had two big turnovers. Should have been three. And the, I think that's a credit to the intensity again, uh, Les. And uh, this is uncharacteristic of Calgary. They've done a great job of managing the football all year and have two turnovers in the first half. That's not like they've been playing. Because these teams played on Monday against each other, are they tired a little bit tonight? Or do you think they're as aggressive as always? I don't oh, yeah. think they're tired. No, I think heck. they're ready to play. This is a great rivalry, and uh, it's such a critical game in the standings. Uh, this is a great way to have a back-to-back -back series. If you're going to have a short week, let it happen on a back-to-back -back series because you're playing the same team you met uh, earlier. And let it happen for us on a Friday night. Good matchup so far. And that's the start of Week 11 of the CFL. When we come back, we'll have a look at what's coming up in the Canadian Football League this weekend. Friday Night Out Football continues at the half on TSN. Three weeks ago, the Hamilton Tiger Cats made a coaching change. Urban Bowman in for Don Southern. And uh, he uh, first game was against the Alouettes in Montreal. Didn't turn out too well. Here's another shot at Montreal. The team's third shot at Montreal this season. We've got it for you here on TSN. CFL Live tomorrow afternoon from Iverwind Stadium at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific time. Other games in the Canadian Football League going on this weekend. On Sunday, it's the Argos at 8-2. Top record in the Canadian Football League, taking on Winnipeg for the first time since week one when they won it 38-23 over the Bombers, although they're coming off a big win over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. It was their third straight loss, dropping them to four and six, and of course the turmoil with the trading of Katie Williams and Lamar McGregs to Hamilton earlier this week. BC Lions add a linebacker while Saskatchewan drops a couple. Lions adding David Benefield. Well, BC made a made a great offer, and and they were really upfront about it, and and we tried to talk to other teams in the league, but I I mean BC made the best offer, and, and this is where all my friends are, so rather than bounce around, I thought I'd stay here, just like Pinball Clemens is in Toronto. You know, you don't really want to bounce around in a league that doesn't want to let its players shine. Benefield gives us some fresh legs, some new enthusiasm, uh, some size. Uh, some uh, maybe a little bit more meanness or whatever you want to call it, aggressiveness. Three is the trilogy. Three is everything, the numerology thing. Three is like a special number. I just, everyone that's played with a three in BC has been an awesome player. Kelly Sims, Barry Wilburn, and I figure I'd try to follow up with everyone else. And anyway, someone else has got my number. <laughs> Well, that certainly won't make BC's defense any weaker. That's for sure, the addition of David Benefield. How about an offense, Marty? Corey Philpott hasn't really been a factor. He's been injured, and that BC offense has improved in a running game to go along with it with Sean Millington. Yeah, they really haven't missed him. I mean, here's a guy who's a proven star, but he's been out with this knee injury for a couple of weeks, and I think that the Lions were trying to move him. The problem was that he was working out on his own a couple of days ago, and he re-injured his knee. So now the talk is that he's going to need arthroscopic surgery, and he's not going to be uh, um, able to play for quite some time. There was a possibility he was going to be traded to Saskatchewan. The Rough Riders did call the Lions and, and ask for uh, Philpott, but uh, they ended up with Mike Saunders from Toronto instead. Good uh, move? Bad move? Well, I think he's a great addition to their football team. Uh, Mike Saunders he himself admitted he was out of position at slot back, as we talked about many times on this show. But as a running back, coming out of the backfield and running the football, he's a good football player, and he's well-known in Saskatchewan because he's played well for that team. Well, Coach, you got to think that Mike Saunders, and, and, and all right, he's a great player and a good person, and he says the right things. Like when he went to Saskatchewan, he stated that he was out of position and he'd love to be a running back. But doesn't that kind of hurt going from a team that you think might be a great cup contender and putting a okay. championship ring on your finger to going to Saskatchewan? Oh, I'm sure that's the other side of the coin, Les. Uh, but, you know... He, He's saying that as far as being comfortable in what he's doing and how he's contributing to the team, it's not his natural position, but uh, you're right. But keep in mind, Saskatchewan's still got a good chance of making the playoffs, and once we get to the playoffs, as we well know, a lot of those Hamilton teams, <laughs> you were on maybe <laughs> for the great cut. <laughs> Evaluate the Rough Riders, though, Coach. I mean, they lose a couple of great linebackers uh, in this situation. We've talked a lot about Katie Williams and Lamar McGregs from the point of view of turmoil, uh, possible turmoil in the dressing room of the Rough Riders, but on the field, obviously this defense that has struggled in the last three games especially is not going to be any better. I would, I would think it's going to be a little worse off. Well, I think we talked about that earlier in the year that, that we were wondering whether or not their secondary, their DBs in particular, uh, were as good as you need to cover some of these uh, explosive offenses and, uh, and they've given up a lot of yardage against the run, so, you know, they've got some work to do and, uh, 
I think uh, I'm confident that uh, Greg uh, Clark will do a good job in there as a middle linebacker because he played great ball for Winnipeg. Now they got to make an adjustment how they're going to play that Sam linebacker where McGriggs played, and then who's going to play Will, which would probably be Rogers. But Rod's point is well taken. Greg Clark might be a great player, but Lamar McGriggs and Katie Williams, in my opinion, are the two best linebackers in the CFL. And Saskatchewan in a situation now trailing the Calgary Stampeders, who are looking to beat Edmonton again. Hey, the Stamps, despite the win on Monday, were the underdogs. Speaking of which, woo, sign them up for kickoff returns. If they could learn to hang on to that football, had a dog once who could just grab it by the lace and run with it until they eventually tripped and rolled over. We'll be back. Friday Night Football continues after this. Now time for our Road to Vanier Cup report brought to you by Chevrolet Cavalier and a look at the top ten in Canadian University football. Of course, that season just getting underway and the match to catch on Saturday. Check out number one, the Waterloo Warriors, led by head coach Tuffy Knight, who used to coach a few years ago, the Wilfrid Laurier Golden Hawks, long traditional rivalry, and they both play at a university stadium in Waterloo, Ontario. So they're both the home team. They're both the visitors, if you will. It is number one, Waterloo, against Laurier. Check it out if you're in the area. Well, in the Edmonton area, the Eskimos uh, fighting back. A close one at the half. They lead by a point with a look at the numbers now. Let's head back to the guys at Commonwealth Stadium. And a good opening half for the Edmonton Eskimos. And Jimmy Kemp, the backup quarterback, can play a little bit. 9 of 13, 149 yards. Yeah, we felt like he needed to step up, and he really has. And people have responded around him. The offensive lines played better. And subsequently, they've moved the football. Yeah, a couple turnovers that Calgary has taken advantage of. And of that time of possession for the Calgary Stampeders, Jeff Garcia has put together two long drives, 105 yards and 190 yards. He's controlling the football and protecting it so far tonight. Who has the momentum in the second half? It's pretty close, isn't it? I think it's close. I mean, the score is close, but uh, St. Peter's did score the last play with a field goal to get within one. Darren Detition with a sports break. Before we get back to Commonwealth to finish this one off, Jimmy Camp of the Eskimos lead it by a point. And we've got a great night for it at Commonwealth in Edmonton, a one-point ball game. Is the Alberta rivalry renewed once more? Second meeting between Edmonton and Calgary this week, Monday nights, and here on Friday night. Coleman to return the second half kickoff for the Stampeders. What a great tackle from behind. Jay Hamilton grabbed him. The return, 21 yards. Looking at the quarterbacks. Fairly decent numbers for both. Yeah, both guys have moved the team. They've taken care of the football for the most part, especially Jimmy Kemp. Garcia made the one throw that was intercepted. His defense came in and made a play. Then he was stripped of the football, which resulted in some points. So he's made really the only mistakes, but he has played pretty good tonight. So Garcia gets the first crack at it in the second half. He's down by a point after the Stampeders scored a field goal late in the opening half. Anderson. Nailed by Willie Pless again. Garcia spread it around fairly well. Pitts was one of the guys he went to almost solely on one drive. Yeah, Pitts really became his guy in the drive where they went 105 yards and threw the touchdown pass to Pitts. But that's good distribution. He's got some people involved. Needs to get Terry. He needs to get Terry Vaughn involved. I feel like Terry Vaughn needs to touch the football as well as Travis Moore. To be second and six. Little jump pass by Garcia, close to the first down. Pleasant made the play on Danielson. Yeah, it was interesting when you look at that, that Terry Vaughn and Travis Moore have not caught a pass. And two wide receivers that are very productive for their quarterback, Jeff Garcia. But credit to Cavis Reed and Malcolm Frank doing a pretty good job covering out there. Wayne Ford only had seven receptions coming into this game for 110 yards, and he's got four catches tonight for 52. It will be a Calgary first down. You know, John, you asked about momentum, and I, it's really tough to tell which team has it right now. Maybe a little edge to Calgary, but I think they're starting to win the war in the trenches. Let's see how that develops as the night progresses. Eskimo running game only netted 20 yards in the first half. Garcia, far side, it'll be a first down. And Ford has his fifth catch of the game. Well, this was a quick play fake to Anderson. Garcia wanted to raise up and throw the ball 
to the 6-4 Allen pitch coming inside from the weak side slot position, but Willie Pless plays it perfectly. Watch Willie Pless in the middle. See him get depth right there and take away the throw. Garcia scrambles to the outside and finds his outlet. Dwayne Ford. His fifth catch, he has 65 yards. Stampeders with another first down. Anderson, five more for his total. Dixon helped make the play, and I think Leroy Blue was in the middle of things down there as well. Well, Kelvin Anderson's had some success in this game running the football, and you saw in the play previous to that last one how much time Jeff Garcia had to check off receivers and look to his outlets. This Calgary offensive line is starting to win that battle up front. Let me correct that. I said a five-yard gain. It's only a two-yard gain. stands in. Close to the first down. Now they've gone to an outside receiver. Travis Moore. Well, you see the chess game taking effect out there. This time Edmonton decides to become aggressive. They're going to come after the quarterback. Willie Pless blitzes. Dwayne Ford steps up and makes a nice block. Allows Garcia to step up and hit Moore for the first down. Stan Peters. Have worked all the way down to the Eskimo 35. Edmonton leading by a point, 11-10, just nicely into the second half. Garcia, shotgun. Has time, has a target. It's Alan Pitts. And Malcolm Frank made the tackle. Gain limited to about three yards. Well, you know, you don't always have to sack the quarterback, but right now Jeff Garcia's has lots of time to throw to Alan Pitts and Vince Danielson. Edmonton just playing his own defense. That's why Dixon has to come out from his inside drop, pick up Allen Pitts out there in the flat. But right now, Jeff Garcia's got plenty of time to see downfield and throw the football. Second and seven, Stampeders. Garcia with a flag down. Has his target. It's Danielson again over the middle. And what would you suspect there? Well, this is the old-fashioned... We need Anthony McClanahan here because this is the WWF body slam. <laughs> because Leroy Blue is drugged to the ground. <laughs> Chris Burns. <laughs> yeah, Burns. They got Burns on the play. And he's an ex-teammate of mine. And Bert, Chris has really added to this offensive line. He's, came from Ottawa, and he's got the 96th outstanding Canadian coming on him, a guy that had about 14 sacks last year. Watch the takedown. <laughs> Second and 17. Garcia away from the first wave of Eskimos. Looking up short of the first down. He's taking some pretty good hits tonight. Ran into Malvin Hunter and Frank down there along with Bruce Dixon. Well, when you talk about that chess game, David Archer, Edmonton Eskimos have decided if they can't get pressure by just sending four, they're going to send more than four and send Willie Quest. And he was part of that blitz and the reason that Garcia had to flush out of the pocket. Garcia to the bench. McLaughlin, front and center now. Good on three of four last week. Hitting on 71.8% of his field goal tries. Definitely within range here. It'll be spotted right on the 45. Stampeders going for the lead. McLaughlin is on target. Calgary on top of the Eskimos for the first time at Commonwealth tonight. Decent drive, that's three points. It's Calgary by two on Friday Night Football. The number one quarterback in Eskimoville, Danny McManus, watching this from the sidelines. He's injured shoulder last week in game one of this Alberta series at McMahon Stadium. Well, he got hit. And a lot of people thought it was late. Did he get the penalty? Ron Lancaster said, I've seen a lot worse. Danny McMahon is week to week. Not sure when he'll be back, but Ron Lancaster doesn't like to speculate. He says, for now, he's not in. In the meantime, Jimmy Camp has been doing pretty nice job. He's tossed for a touchdown. Hasn't 
given up an interception. Important with a drive. lot of confidence. Important drive coming up for Jimmy Kemp now. He needs to come out and answer the Calgary score with a drive of his own. Here's Waits for the kickoff, and he's away. Out to the 40-yard line. Biggs got the tackle. I got a question for you. We saw that great shot of Jimmy Kemp sitting right on the bench, kind of not looking real excited. This is a big drive. What is going through his mind as he gets ready to come back on the field? I think his approach, he comes in with his approach. He immediately starts thinking about what he did in the opening drive of the game. Remember, he moved the team down. He took the high percentage throws. He said, hey, I don't want to make a mistake as Marcus Crandall, the, the guy that's now the backup with Danny Manisau, looks on. He hadn't had any playing time this year, but I think, I think Camp has to take that philosophy and attack and be precision based. They'll begin from the 39. Camp missed that one. Coburn was the closest Eskimo to the football. Well, you immediately see a little bit of the uneasiness coming into the second half here as, as Kemp is thrown incomplete. Marcus Crandall, they talk about uh, Ronnie Lancaster, talks about Crandall, says he's got a tremendous arm. Uh, he comes from East Carolina. He reminds him a lot of the Jeff, Jeff Blake down for, for Cincinnati. He comes from that same mold. Second and ten. Kemp stands in, look for Flutie. And it was tipped away. Good deep drop by Elijah Johnson. We talked earlier in the game about how Elijah Johnson likes to take away the crossers. And once he does that, the key is for him to get depth and make sure that the layered receivers in the zone, that the quarterback throws it underneath. Now watch Johnson take a steep drop and get his hands up. Darren Flutie has no chance behind him. Deliver the football. And McCready came up with the big play, but 
Edmonton on the run, but Edmonton decides to just send for it. Watch all the time that Garcia has to throw. Well, they play, they play man coverage in behind, and they're playing what we call an outside technique where the defensive back plays more closer to the side than he does inside, and they're just running those in-breaking routes for easy completions. The game was 18. Calgary with a first down at the Edmonton 45. Garcia under the cover again for Terry Vaughn, and another big Calgary first down. Now inside the 30 as Bruce Dixon wrapped him up. 18 yards on the play. Harry Vaughn came a long way, but again, tons of time for Garcia to wait for him to come through. You see Vaughn, number two, coming all the way from the far side of the field to this hash mark, close to the Edmonton bench. Garcia doesn't have that much time. Vaughn well, never gets up there. Yeah, Vaughn's going to win that every time, but he's got Bruce Dixon trying to shadow him the linebacker. Calgary with 20 first downs. Kelvin Anderson stopped on the 25 by Malvin Hunter. And that's what Calgary does. They formation you, and that means they move their receivers around. Sometimes Vaughn's outside, sometimes he's inside, sometimes he's in the slot. And that time he was the number three receiver, meaning from the sideline in. And he got isolated on a linebacker, which was which was a perfect scenario. They would love to have him lined up on a linebacker all night. What that does for Garcia also is if, depending on how the Edmonton Eskimos line up on those formations, he knows whether it's man or zone coverage. Second and seven. Garcia back to the shotgun with six receivers in. He finds Vaughn. Good run by Vaughn. Touchdown. What a great run by Terry Vaughn to turn that into six points. And Glenn, we're going to get a chance to see this. And to my surprise, look who's shadowing it again. It's, it's Bruce Nixon. Yeah, that's... That's a tough matchup for the Edmonton Eskimos to have linebacker Bruce Dixon, who does a good job on the run, but definitely is not a cover man, to go all the way across with Vaughn and try and track him. He's going to flash right across the middle, and it's really what he does after he catches the football. Just watch the second effort find that goal line. <laughs> Big hit right on the line as Vaughn glides into the end zone. Third catch of the second half. He has 54 yards. And the touchdown, the Stampeders have now moved in front, 20 to 11. Field goal and a touchdown in the second half. Garcia has the Stamps on a roll on Friday Night Football. So why is this guy smiling? Well, he owns the Calgary Stampeders. They're playing a pretty good second half here in Commonwealth, where it's never easy to win. Siguche. Yeah, what a job by Siguche to turn that team around. He's got some enthusiasm to book football back in Calgary. The kickoff taken by the Gibbs. And he lost his footing. Haven't been too many slips out on this soggy turf in Commonwealth, but the Gibbs went down. Well, this is back to the touchdown. Terry Vaughn just catches the dump pass from into the end zone. Garcia now 21 of 25, 274 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And not a bad spike. Not a bad spike. It's up to Jimmy Kent. All for his last four passes. Kemp is maybe feeling a little of the pressure now. Well, what coaches talk about, Glenn, and you can back me up on this, is they talk about playing the first five minutes of both halves with maybe as much intensity as you can possibly play with. That sets the tone. Edmonton came out in the first in the first half and played extremely well. They've come out here pretty listless. Subsequently, Calgary's grabbed the flow of the game and stuck two scores on the board. Absolutely. And concern on the face of Ron Lancaster as he faces the sideline. And, you know, he said he wouldn't wait too long to make the switch and Jimmy Kent wasn't moving the football team. Second and eight. Facing Kent now. Decision right away, and it was a good one. Knocked that ball out of there. His reputation isn't by accident. He's considered one of the
one of the best corners in this league. And already two two and outs now for the Edmonton offense. To, con to congratulate them, he's got to go return the punt. Fleming lost it. Stampeders have it. Those bigs coming up with a loose ball. This has really turned around now on the Eskimos. A stunt confused in the confusion right here is Raymond Biggs who's gonna take off clean on a little bit of a stunt. Look at him just go straight up through the middle and is clean. And Sean Fleming has no shot to get that ball off. He's just trying to get out of the way. Maybe I should have carried through and got a cut of the digger. Remember back to week one. McMahon, and they really did get through to block this one. Merrill DeClaire. Assignments up front. Biggs is there on that one, too. Well, if you watch closely on that replay of the of the kick here tonight, the up back blocks nobody. And it, special teams is about assignments, Clint, and you said it exactly. You've got to carry out your assignment and block the people you're responsible for. Stampeders are set up. Inside the Eskimo 15. Loose ball. Eskimos had a chance at it. And it's going the other way. Bruce Dixon takes some heat off. Sean Black. Oh, does he's he ever. the happiest guy in town right now. Does he ever? Sean Fleming almost jumped out of his uniform. He was so pumped up. And this, this is a monster hit, too. Bruce Dixon comes up with the recovery. And once again, the defense bails out. Shoddy play on special teams. And guess who it was? Oh, yeah. Derek McCready. Oh, that yeah. Guy. I'll tell you what. He's already my vote for defensive lineman of the week. This you guy's playing a great ball game. You think we can make him an all-star in one night? Look at the relief Big on Sean Fleming's face. Jimmy Kemp beginning at the 15. Good play action take. Far side. Stampede. 
Peters will have to make some adjustments up front. He's not putting a lot of weight on that right leg. I don't think he'll be back in a real hurry no. here. Not good news for Calgary, obviously. 20 to 11. Stan Peters have roared back and taken the lead. They've scored three times in a row. Field goal to win the first half. Field goal to begin the second and then the touchdown. Out of the backfield. Henry Williams. Does he turn the first down? I think he's got it. What a super effort by Giz to get this first down. Just his athletic ability allows him to pick up the first down. You see Giz explaining to the officials exactly where he wants the ball spotted. Well, he does it all right. Returns punts, kick goes, record holder in every category, and returns you can think of, catches the ball in the backfield. He also does a little officiating. Well, he stopped dead the rights there, and he goes over the tackler and gets the first down. First first down for the Eskimos in the second half. Hit from the shotgun. Thank you. 
Edmonton, number 46, declined. Ineligible receiver, Edmonton, 51, declined. First down, Calgary. So they come up empty. And that says it all, doesn't it? It sure does. To come away empty after a, a drive that has given some momentum back to Edmonton is really a downer. Well, hey, if you're on the other sideline, it certainly isn't. Yeah. You just dodged your bullet. <laughs> Final play, third quarter has gone by, and the Stamps lead it by nine. Welcome back. Friday night football after three quarters. How close it is, how close it could have been had Edmonton been able to cash in on a little confusion there in the fake field goal at the end. But Calgary gets the lead in the initiative of Jeff Garcia. We've seen him uh, block. We've seen him tackle. But, of course, he is known to throw a football or two. And, Obi, nice one on the touchdown. Well, you know, something that Jeff wasn't doing earlier in the season, we've already seen uh, when Marty uh, illustrated his toughness in this game, in this play here, he does such a great job now of stepping up in the pocket to avoid the rush. And when he does that, then he buys some time and he looks downfield and gets it to Terry Vaughn. And Terry Vaughn does a heck of a job, although I don't know if the ball got across that goal line. His rear end sure did, but the ball looked like it was short. <laughs> hey, was that a fake field goal or did they botch it or what? It's hard to tell because uh, I was surprised they didn't take the three points because then it just keeps them a touchdown from taking the lead. And then they had to set it up less and uh, turnovers again. And plus a nice play to Shannon Myers down the field. Edmonton's defense has definitely been keeping them in the game. Uh, Derek McCready, who um, David Archer has been speaking about all game, is having a solid game. Watch him just come up the middle right here and just shove this ball. Well, he put a helmet right on the ball and popped it right out. And that was one of three turnovers that Edmonton has had in this game to keep them in the game. Well, Calgary's at least hemmed deep in their own zone. One thing Edmonton can at least take some solace in as this fourth quarter starts. Well, Edmonton's playing hard defensively. They've really made a lot of good plays, as Les uh, pointed out. And uh, it's just that offensively, they're not taking advantage of their scoring opportunity, especially in that last drive. Well, so it's Calgary with 10 points in that third quarter have a nine-point lead heading into the fourth quarter at Commonwealth Stadium. You just get the feeling, though, could be quite a finish. Let's head back now to John, Glenn, and Dave. Hey, we think it'll be a good finish here tonight. Stampeders have taken control. The Eskimos almost got right back into the ballgame. Well, the little things can cost you in a big way, and a uh, couple of execution problems for Jim Kemp, and the Edmonton Eskimos, Willie Kless, who was in the backfield at the end of that drive, and all of a sudden they come away with no points. Set up at the five-yard line with three cracks at it, the Eskimos come up empty. The St. Peters have to begin near the five, Garcia, away from two Eskimos, and he's out across the ten. In the life of the Eskimos. Ultimate highs <laughs> begin right here with a great block and another first down. That's a big time block by Shannon Myers, and he comes back, bobbles the ball, gets the block from Darren Flutie, and goes on the 69 yard play. And then after watching this play a couple times, I think Jimmy Kemp did this on his own. I think he pulled that on his own. And ended up making the field goal and missing the toss into the end zone. So here's Willie Pless on another tackle. Well, I was talking about the fact that it might be, it might have been a good time to fake the field goal. This wasn't a fake. This was just a bobbled snap by Kemp. He can't get it on the tee, and then he's dead. Now he's just scrambling, looking for a receiver. And he throws to the center. <laughs> well, the killer on the play is Fairway comes out with his hand stuck in the air. <laughs> Obviously played a different game than I've ever played before. They're pretty high at Fairway's athletic abilities. You see the Stampeders that close to a first down. Pretty even in time of possession. Eskimos have put some decent yards up in net yardage. Stampeders have been just a little better, 365. And Garcia's been hot. Well, it's like Coach Abilovich said at the break, you got to cash in on your opportunities. When you get one down the field like that, no matter what happens craziness-wise, you have to punch it in in games like this. Lots of time to go. Third down and inches for Calgary. They're gambling near their 15. No markers down, so they should advance the yardsticks. Wally Buono has won 98 times 
Jensen's taking over as the head coach of the Calgary Stampeders in 1990. Calgary with the first down at the 15. Stats still dominating the running game. Anderson gets the call again. Dean is four. And 39, Willie Pless is there one more time. We're getting some good blocking at the point of the attack. Rocco Romano doing a great job on the edge, but nobody can get their hand on Willie Pless. Watch him scrape across. That's a great football play by an unbelievable player, future Hall of Famer, no question, Willie Pless, who just uses his speed, scrapes to the outside, and makes the play. He's closing in on a thousand tackles in his CFL career. Leading the league and the team again. Garcia. Looking now. Good try. Pretty tight coverage. On Travis Moore. Davis Reed was back. And he had a little help. Great job of reacting to the football in the air from Davis Reed. He had pretty good coverage downfield, but he does a nice job making sure he looks back. Now, Garcia at this point is scrambling, but see Kavis Reed, make sure he keeps his eye on the ball, go up and knock it down. And... Tough night on Garcia, he's been hit a time or two in the open field and in the backfield, and well, trying to get one away. Blow punt. Here's Henry Williams. Up to the 45, three yards on the return after a 48-yard punt. So it's up to... Jimmy Camp to get the Eskimos on a roll again. This game to the Calgary Stampeders is easy to see from this. A win here, and they're back in the chase for first spot in the Western Division. And they're also one game up in the series with the Edmonton Eskimos. Yeah. With one left to play yeah. here. Yeah. And bragging rights till October anyway. Perfect night for football in Alberta, isn't it? Early movement. Who moved quickly? I think it was the whole defensive line. Making an adjustment out there with Marvin Pope. Offside, Calgary 96. That's Bronzel Miller, but this is a great job by Jimmy Kemp. We come out of the we come out of the break. Bronzel out of the timeout, and they and they, he uses a staggered count. Bronzel Miller gets called, but but look at that. <laughs> I mean, they were all there. You could have picked one. They were racing. And five as a result. Jeff can't find anyone open. Now looks deep for Gardner. Now what's he thinking? He knows he's wide open. He just put a little too much juice on it, right? He really did. He really he understands that hey, I, I got out of I got out of trouble with protection there, slid outside, and Bobby Gordon broke clean for me. Gordon just running a seam route, and he realizes his quarterback's in trouble. Now he breaks it to the corner because he knows he's all alone, and Jimmy is just a little too careful with the ball and made sure he put it out where only his guy could get it. Unfortunately, nobody could get it. But he needed 3-2 speed to get there. <laughs> even, though, even though Al Jordan will take some ripping in the game tape tomorrow, he, that was just a long incompletion as far as he's concerned. Second and five, Eskimos trailing by nine. time again. He's got Gordon. That'll be a first down. Kevin Leonard. Leonard covering on Gordon. Well, here's Robert Gordon. I played with Robert last year. Good route runner. Understands the scheme of what you're trying to do. He broke off the back's route and broke inside and caught the ball in traffic. That's one thing that he doesn't get enough credit for, is he will come into the middle and catch the football for you in traffic. And I like the way he caught it with his hands. He didn't try and pull that one into his chest, stuck those hands out there and got the separation. Eskimos at the 45, first down. Kent has told her, big hit on him, but he held on. That was Leonard again. Nothing fancy for this Calgary defense, dropping off a lot of zone defense. That's why Kemp is dumping it over, over the middle. Over the underneath route here, but that's called three yards and a headache. 
because if you look back, you can put that arm up there, there's no face guarding. And that's what they look for, whether there was contact or not, that's what the referee looks for. If the, the, the DB looks back, he's not going to get flagged. Now, now, he did look back, but there was no face guarding, but with that other hand, did he give him a shove? I don't think there's any question he shoved Darren. Darren was off balance on the play, but Jimmy waited just a hair long to throw the ball, got great protection on the blitz. Sean Fleming missed one earlier. Dead on that time, and the Eskimos creep just a little bit closer. Six-point ball game, and a long way to go. Here in the fourth quarter on Friday Night Football. Yards rushing in just ten games. Boy, has he put together a great season. Chasing 2,000. First and ten. Sam Peters after the Eskimo field goal. Kelvin Anderson, another solid run. You talk about the year Mike Pringles having, David, you know, you start thinking about guys for consideration for most valuable player. I mean, yeah, I don't think that debate can come up without including two running backs from the East, and that would be Robert Drum and Mike Pringle. Anderson has now picked up 92 yards against this Eskimo defense. Garcia on second and five. They'll come up short. Derek McCready. I'll tell you what, my vote is in. <laughs> he is the lineman. He might be the defensive player of the week. This guy's been everywhere. You can't vote with eight minutes and 46 seconds to go. It's in. To the right of your screen, kind of sniffs it out, and then flies down the field and puts on the big hit on a wide receiver. Third down, less than a yard to go. In a six-point ball game, the Stampeders are gambling at their own 45. Anderson up and over the top, and he'll have enough for the first down without any problem. And no flags anywhere. It really is an amazing story what Kelvin Anderson's been able to do this year against the Edmonton Eskimos. Last year in three games, he only had about 35 yards rushing in all three combined. This year, he's close to 100 in every single game. I believe he's been over 90 in the first two. Almost 100 in the first two games, yeah. and he's almost there again tonight. I mean, all of a sudden, he's found the key. On first down, Calgary, it's Anderson again. And not much there that time. Willie Pless stepped up. 20 to 14, a six-pointer going at Commonwealth. The rematch from Monday. You know, Willie Pless coming into tonight to see Jeff Garcia. Pless just made that tackle on Anderson. Pless coming into the game tonight only needed two tackles to go past Larry Ruck as the all-time leading tackler in, Ed in Eskimo history in the regular season. Well, he's definitely passed yeah. there tonight. Yeah. He needed 60-some-odd to hit the 1,000 mark in his career with BC and Toronto thrown in there. Garcia.
side, evidently Pitts, he expects Pitts to slide to the outside, and Davis read the play. You saw the outside receiver fading to the sideline. He turned him loose and broke back on the ball to make the play. And an old teammate you find used to call this Pixies in the <laughs> That's the second time he's gotten to do that dance. That's his second return for a touchdown this year. A 45-yarder against Saskatchewan for Cavus Reed. Back on July 4th. Eskimos on top by a point. But there's lots of time left, folks. 6.39 to play, fourth quarter. The Stampeders have their hands on the ball. With Coleman returning. Maurice Miller. Well, David, you mentioned it. This is not his first touchdown return. As you said, John, he, threw, he intercepted the pass against Kevin Mason in Saskatchewan and took it back for a touch, and this actually sealed that game. That was a big play by Reed, and that one, and none bigger than the one he just made. You know, when you can pattern Reed as a corner, and what I mean by that is when one receiver does one thing, you can know what the other receiver will do automatically, and Davis Reed's get to be one of the best at it. It's up to Garcia to get even, and Anderson won't get anywhere. surprise. Between him and McCready, they've got about 35 tackles between the two of them, but I think that's a great point you made, Glenn, about Cavis Reed's ability to pattern read. And pattern read meaning the combinations that happen between a slot receiver and an outside receiver, and you're right, Cavis Reed did that all the way on that play. Second and eight. Garcia back to the shotgun. Here comes some heat. He gets it away, sideline batter. Pitts makes the catch. And he's forced out by Tommy Henry. Big first down for Calgary. 5.38 to play. Eskimos clinging to a one-point lead. Here's Alan Pitts right here. Works right down the sideline and then turns out when he sees Garcia scrambling. Pretty nice job. He's going to come up the field. Now watch him turn out again. Keep his foot inbound. Nice play action fake by Garcia to his left. He'll take off. That'll be another Calgary first down. Now, football's a game of emotion. And Davis Reed made that big interception. The fans here got back involved. Edmonton was up, but Jeff Garcia is doing a great job, David, of turning that around and getting some momentum back. You're exactly right. There's no place worse than having to come in here in a hostile environment as a, as a visiting quarterback and just throw an interception for a touch in the fourth quarter and realize you got to rally your football team. I love the way they're changing things up. The bootleg, Garcia makes the proper decision. Garcia's kept it in his own hands six times tonight and rushed for 42 yards. Another good fake, release. This catch, Dwayne Ford has played extremely well. Likely should have held on to that one. Well, you talked about Garcia's rushing stats and coming into the game, he was the number seven rusher in the league. And strangely enough, the top running back or top rushing quarterback in the league above Damon Allen, Tracy Ham, and Doug Flutie. Did you ever get into that rushing derby with quarterbacks? Absolutely not. <laughs> I would have loved to. He just didn't have the skills. So I was like, John, that was only because he didn't have to. He was delivering strikes. <laughs> Second and ten. Big play for Calgary here. They trail by a point. Garcia has all day. They can't hit Travis Moore. 79. Derek McCready, part of the play for Edmonton's defense. Bruce Dixon almost had one for the trophy case because that one bounced right off the mitts of Bruce Dixon. Yeah, this is one where you feel like, hey, I got all the protection in the world. What do you mean I can't find somebody open? There's got to be. And then you make the mistake of almost. Well, you need to throw that one in the stands and get off the field. Martino got a little heat there but got it away. There will be no return for the Giz. Good punt, good punt for Tony Martino. And no chance for the is. 
Great finish guaranteed on Friday Night Football. We've got a one-pointer. Not remain that when this one is over. Big series of downs here now for Jimmy Kemp and the Eskimo offense. Must punch the ball out of here. Kemp from the shotgun. There's a marker down immediately. Sideline pattern. That'll be enough for a first down. The penalty's not against the Eskimos. Tobert made the catch. Mark Tobert has had a pretty good night. What are you guys spotting as the infraction down there? Either was Steve Anderson offside, but we'll wait and hear it officially. Mark Tobert made the catch his fifth of the night for 52 yards. Offside, Calgary 96, decline. Should say so. Well, you see Jimmy using the, the head bob a little bit, but he definitely staggered the count. He's able, to, sorry, he's able to get that defensive front pulled offside, but what a big throw by Kemp on it, seriously. He needed to get a couple first downs, move the team out, super throw on first down. Out across the 20 at the 21 is where the Eskimos are now. Leading by a point. Kemp will put it up again. Maybe not. Looked like he just fell down. We haven't talked about the field conditions really being a factor all game because it's been pretty good for these players, but that was one of those situations where Kemp tried to take off and run out of there, just slipped and fell. Lost his footing and lost it down on almost 10 yards. See, he's got the corner to the right. And he wanted to drop the ball off to Darren Flutie, but Kitten Leonard baited him. If he'd thrown the ball there, he'd have picked it off for six. Tough situation for Kemp and the Eskimos here on second and 16. Under the cover, there's a flag down, late hit. Not sure. Kemp is down. Coleman made the tackle. Major foul. Roughing the passer. Whoa. Calgary 94. Jeff Traversy into the game for Marvin Pope. And that, a very costly play for Wally Buono and the Calgary Stampeders. Traversy's uh, going to have to report to the principal. That's where he's going right now. Time out here. We'll be right back. Biggest play of the ball game happened just moments ago. Stampeders penalized for rough play. Gives the Eskimos new life. The great Mayor Bryant said a football game usually comes down to one or two big plays. All right, a bit in. Now, Wally Wano on the Stampeder side didn't like that call. Well, I think the only reason there was a problem with it is he led with his head. I don't think the call, it was actually a late hit. I think he led with the head, and I think that's they called it rough play. They didn't call it roughing the passer. But what a huge mistake to, to make uh, Travers be the rookie, the number three college draft pick this year for... Calgary comes in in a game, probably never been in the game with the magnitude of this game right now. I said he didn't like the call. He really hated the call. <laughs> Eskimos out at the 38 with a first down and a one-point lead. There's the running game. Biggest running play for the Eskimos in about three weeks. Al Jordan made the tackle on Eric Blunt. 17 yards. That's almost what they had last week in Calgary in total. It was something like 23. I, I think this is the result of the previous play, to be honest with you. You know, the Calgary defense had Edmonton bottled up in their own end. Now they've let them out, and they're mostly down. Eskimos for the first down up near the 50. Oh, my God. Good fake by Kent. Takes off on the naked bootleg himself. Makes is there. So is Kent and Leonard. And he did that on his own. Jimmy Kent pulled that out on his own. Got down, got a good, got a five-yard gain. Prior to the game story thus far, the final chapter is two minutes and 17 seconds away. Kent said a good night. Stamps have rushed well. Garcia has passed for 289. Kavis Reed has a couple of interceptions, including the 58-yarder. And the Eskimos have scored 10 points in the fourth quarter. Have I missed anything? <laughs> Darius McCready has played well. Right? That's it so far. Looks like early movement, and here comes the flag. Kent may have a free one here. Now he wants to run on every play. Alondra Johnson made the tackle.
he's changing his count. And it's affecting the defensive front. The defensive front is foaming at the mouth trying to get to him, and they're being pulled offside by Kemp's count. There it is right there. Dagger count, Bernie Brown gets pulled on it. I'll tell you what, we may be seeing a young quarterback come of age right here. This is a guy that really hadn't had a chance to direct a real good football team as a starter, and he's doing it right now. That's a good point. He's got a pretty good offense out there. And a defense that gets the job done. And all of a sudden, a running game that seems to be working a little more effectively. Five yards on the play. Well, as a quarterback, you got to be able to pull people off. And Tom Wilkinson, huh? John, I guess you saw him play a few times. I did see him play a few times. <laughs> Sooner played against him. No, I guess not, eh? No, never got to play no, against him. No, I was 84, so I missed him. They missed him, yeah. He was pretty darn good at it. Well, there's some great ones on the ring of honor in this ballpark. He wasn't very flashy, though.
margin of victory right now is on that interception return. Or at least margin of lead right now is on the interception return by Kavis Reed for 58. Well, this defense has come up big in the second half. Don't forget that Derek McCready hit down on about the 10-yard line that jarred the ball loose from, from Kelvin Anderson. It looked like they might punch that in for a touchdown and go up by a, a large margin. Huge hit comes up with the recovery. Bruce Dixon recovers the fumble. And McCready, in my mind, there's your MVP on defense, even though Willie Pless has been all over. He has wreaked havoc in that, in that offensive backfield. And a lot of times, while he was being double-teamed by the Calgary offensive line, didn't stop him. He had a heck of a night. A bit of a bit of a coming out party for him. He had the knee injury last year, suffered through a long season. He and Willie Pless have played some big-time football on defense tonight. So here's the deal. Second and 12, 103 on the clock. Eskimos want to hang on to the football and see if they can get it to John Fleming. Brett looks to put it up. There's a flag down. Flutie made the catch. That might about do it. What do you think? Well, Eddie's going to give the token argument here, Glenn, but there's no question he's all over Darren Flutie on this play and a nice, accurate throw from Jimmy Kemp. Well, and you talked about the meeting of Kemp and the, and the other quarterback, Danny McManus and Ron Lancaster on the sideline. You think maybe they mentioned Darren Flutie's name in that meeting? Forward pass interference. Calgary, 29. There you go. You're talking about a safe enough play. There's no possibility of an inter... Well, little possibility of an interception on this one. Oh, and this shows a lot of confidence in Jenny Camp. They come after him, but he makes a good, low, accurate throw, and I don't think there was... The contact happened before the ball got there with Eddie Davis as, as Darren Flutie fought across his face to get inside. No he, question. Good call by the officials. He was riding the back of Darren Flutie. He first down. 50 seconds on the clock. The Eskimos have a one-point lead game that's working all of a sudden. Eric Flood again. Well, now Camp and this offense for Edmonton just keep running the ball one more time and get the field goal unit on. It's a much shorter field goal attempt for Sean Fleming to get that fourth point margin of victory. Or I should say lead. There is 40 seconds left. It's a one point lead right now. But it's second down, and four to go, so the Eskimos can take a little more time off the clock, even if they don't get a first down here. One again, running hard, and the first down. I'll tell you what, an offensive line who came into this week taking a lot of heat, has stepped up here in the fourth quarter and really created some creases for, for them to run the football in, along with Tony Burst. And they gave Tampa a lot of time on other occasions. Well, that's why they took the heat. Those 62.8 yards rushing per game, terrible. They needed to do a good job, and certainly have done it tonight. So another Edmonton first down, six seconds on the clock. The Eskimos will take three more off. You see the veteran kick the field goal. goal. The veteran Rod Connum, John, was saying, motioning to the sideline, saying, we need to kick the field goal here. Point could be the difference down the line. First game was a one-pointer, Edmonton won in Calgary. The Stamps came back last week and shellacked Edmonton. Well, Connum would know anything about points. He would be the guy. Six in career games played in this league, so he certainly has probably seen every situation known to man. He arrived here in 1982, did Rod Conop. The Eskimo record since then, 193 wins, make it 194, 106 losses one time. Here's Fleming's chance to finish off the Stampeders. He nails it. Never ever count the Eskimos out at Commonwealth. And the names you need to mention, Thomas Ram, Derek Soldice, Rod Connup, Leo Gronwagen, Chris Morris, and Tony Burst. I think they, they told the story there in the fourth quarter. And David, I'd like to add one more name to that list, and that's the name of Jimmy Kemp, who was a backup. And, you know, you could sort of talk to some of the Calgary players. They thought, you know, I think we're going to get this game. I don't know if Jimmy Kemp can win it. He came in here and did a nice job. He really had a whale of a ball game, didn't he? He sure did. Maybe his best game of his career. Eskimos get even with the Calgary Stars.
Staff Peters for the slider on Labor.